I'm very happy uh, to have you all here to talk about artificial intelligence and the future of humanity. Um, we start with the past. This place here is hosting the original rebuild, so far, of the Z3 by Konrad Zuse. So it's in the other building, and this is the first computer, programmable computer ever built in Europe. So this is a historical place. We are speaking here about the future at the place where you can see the achievements in technologies by humankind we have done. That's why we picked this place. That's why we thought this is a perfect place to speak because we are writing history today too. We are, you know, bringing advances. Um, this machine uh, programmed by, by Zeus in the 1930s and 40s destroyed during the Second World War had 200 bytes of working memory. So 200 bytes, keep this in mind, and 5.3 hertz of processing powers. So everyone who has a, a smartphone today knows how damn slow this is. Very expensive, very big, first programmable computer made in Germany. We started Rise of I very small. Um, I started a meetup group because I wanted to speak a couple of years ago with other people about artificial intelligence. And um, we met in Seabase. And for those from Berlin, they know it, everyone else, Seabase is the first hacker space which we had. And it's a um, spaceship. And we were 15 people discussing for a whole evening if there would be a singularity one day or not. And they asked me if I could do this a little bit bigger. So next time we met, and we were 70 people. And then we were 180 people. And today, we are over 300 people. So the topic of artificial intelligence finally reached a certain critical mass of interested people. And you are all these early adopters who are thinking about this. And you are the lucky ones who are sitting here because we have a long waiting list because we made a cut a couple of weeks ago said, no, these who have a ticket, they can come, no one else. So what is artificial intelligence? It's a very tricky question, and whoever you will ask, you will get a lot of answers about this. Words are a very terrible uh, way of expressing something. Uh, words is a form of compressing complex thoughts. So I tried to write down what I, how I would describe artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence is, for me, a set of algorithms which is using generating data to make their own decisions to improve within given frameworks. And as I said, language is terrible, so I need to explain my words with another words. And let's start. Algorithms are nothing else than experienced form in mathematical models. So everyone who of you has ever used a cooking receipt, a receipt is like an algorithm. It gives you a certain step and orders to have a result at the end. And we humans, we have algorithms too, because we have experience and we learn something and we, we, we use them in future. Then these algorithms, they are using input, they process the input, they have a memory function today, long-term memory, short-term memory, so they remember things, and then they make their own decisions, what we humans would call thinking. Yes, not thinking, thinking, but still thinking because they use data to come up with own decisions. And then they improve, and what we call improving is learning. Yes, if you improve, you learn something. You did something wrong or right, and you do it better next time. And within given frameworks, nothing else than having rules or motivation. Something everyone knows, if you have employees, they have to be motivated to. They need to have rules. And everyone who's citizen of the state knows we have rules and laws. So the same we do for machines. We give them laws, we give them rules, so they can act on their own within this. And the beauty about this is, this is adaptable. The better they learn, the better they make decisions, and the larger the framework is, the more they will act. So words are terrible to explain something, so please create a picture of yourself. What is artificial intelligence for you? What is the first thought which comes in your mind when you think about AI? Is it this one? I hope not, by the way. This is Hall 9000, and this is the stereotype of a dystopian AI or rough AI which starts to kill humans, something we don't. Maybe it's this one? It's a little bit more recent, it has a female character by it. It's from Ex Machina, by the way, rough AI too, killing humans, not good. So for me, AI is also this one. 
This is IBM Deep Blue. This is the computer which won the world championship in chess or was beating the world champion in chess 1996 and again 1997. So this was an AI. This was an AI because the first time or for another time we humans learned we are not perfect. Machines can beat us in a task because chess was a very human game so far where we thought oh, we only can solve it. By the way, no animal is able to play chess and win against us, but machines, which we built, was able. So this is a computer, today it's part of a museum. So this is what we do with AI if we don't need it anymore. We turn them off, we put them somewhere else. This is in AI too. This is AlphaGo, and it won against Lee Sodol in Go. So whoever has played Go before knows Go is different than chess. It's a game with, where you need something like intuition. Um, it is not brute, brute force, so you can't do by math all the possible solutions. It's, you have to develop a feeling for it, and it's a component of strategy. Still, the AI won it. So this is an artificial intelligence too, which you don't see, but it won a game. And still it's a game, so it's a fixed framework, but within this framework, the AI was able to solve it. By the way, uh, Nick Bostrom wrote in his book Superintelligence, which is an interesting book, in 2014 that humankind needs another 10 years to solve the game of Go. One year later, Google solved it. So whatever, even if the expert thinks it's not possible, one year later, you could be wrong. It is solvable. This is in AI too. This is IBM Watson. Most of us have heard about it. And just in contrast, to the machine which is in the next building, as we spoke about this. This has 90 servers together, 16 terabyte of memory, and each server has eight quattro core processors with 3.5 gigahertz. So this is over a million times more powerful in the last 80 years, maybe cost the same fortune. I tell you, in 10 years or in 20 years, every one of you has this in your pocket and the same, just smaller. This will be in your pocket soon, not next year, but in the next 10 to 20 years. The interesting part about IBM Watson is this is a very strong AI. We know it was uh, um, winning Jeopardy, a very human task too, because, you know, being in show and so forth, and it won by a landslide, like 2,000 points to 10,000, uh, to 2,000 points. It's like ter wonderful. But also, it's more than an AI because a lot of startups and companies use Watson to build their own AI applications. So this is a platform AI. It's not one AI. We speak here about thousands of AI which are running on these systems. So one AI is producing more AIs out there. Um, every one of you has an AI with him, yeah, in your pocket if you're an Apple user. Even if it's not the most smartest one, it's still a form of AI. Um, for the Windows users amongst us, you can use Cortana. Um, this is a very beautiful piece of AI, uh, uh, Amazon Alexa, because this is the first AI which is in your home and your family starts interacting with. You use this computer not to type, you give comments by voice, and this is the future too. In future, you will not type with your computers. The next step is you will talk to your computers because we can talk way faster than we can type. Typing is super slow. Talking is way faster, and you can hear it when I speed up too much. Yes? So this is a beautiful too because you say, what is the weather? Please order me food. Um, um, please order me uh, an, a taxi, but please play my favorite Spotify list. Please turn on the TV, make the lights. So we use AI to interact with our environment. This AI helps us to control the less sophisticated systems out there. Self-driving cars, each of them, if it's Daimler, if Audi, if it's Tesla, if it's Google, they have their own form of AI. And this is a very, very beautiful example of about the collective intelligence. If one Tesla does not know what a white truck is on the street, it's tragic. But afterwards, every Tesla out there knows how to recognize a white truck. So hundred thousands of cars out there learned from one mistake one system was doing. With every mile a car is driving, if they do something right or wrong, every other car learns. So they get better every day significantly. They system update instantly. We humans, we all know it. You had to go to driving schools, you had to take lessons, you had to learn all this paperwork, and it didn't, you know, even if you know it well, all your friends, they had to do it too. We could not share this knowledge. It was really, really slow and really painful, and we are still shitty drivers. As you heard in the video before, we kill 40,000 people just in the US every year. We are terrible at this. So that's why we went AI to do the stuff which we are not good at and which we don't want to and which we are super slow. Well, um, stock market is mainly run by AI. Today, I don't say anymore you beat the market, you beat the bot, which you can't. It's faster, it's more reliable, and it is rational. 
We all know that stock markets go down because people are irrational. They sell and buy when they're not supposed to do because it doesn't make sense. And they are, they are less hard to influence, yes? Um, mainly our wealth is today driven by AI because they already run the stock markets. And everyone who has stocks, and they were going up for the last six years, we benefit from this. Google is an AI company. Google changed their strategy to AI first a couple of months ago. It's a full AI company developing. If you use Google Maps, well, you have seen the AI. It knows uh, which path is the fastest. It knows where the traffic jams is. It is, you know, I, I still grew up with using maps, and whoever was doing the maps, they didn't know the traffic jam. They didn't know which route is fast, especially outside of the country. So there is an AI. Google AdWords is an AI because it's optimizing your bits. Google Search is an AI because it knows what you type in before you type it in. And even if you don't know what you type in, it will give you the right recommendations. And just imagine you had to go to a library, get a book, read for the sources, get the next book, and so forth. And you do this within two minutes on Google. So this is an AI. And there are younger AIs too. Um, this, for example, is the company Parlamind, based here in Berlin, and they are able to answer emails. If you use Zendesk or Gmail, for example, an email is coming in, and the customer support agent sees the possi possible answer already there, he can say, I want that the AI is answering the email all the time, or only if I accept this. But this system is able to read your emails, and we all hate emails. We all, I would say, get 80%, not the spam, the spam is already faded out, I call it Soft spam, people who want something from you and you know you don't want to answer it, you could use an employee or something else to do this for you. Well, this is your digital employee and in the future, every one of us will have this. It's like your smart inbox and you will decide who will get instant responses, who not, and so far. Another form of AI is the company Exolite Dynamics based in London. They have a mission control for drones. So if you want to control one drone, oh, that's it's hard, but it's possible. If you want to do two or three, it's hard. Have you ever tried to control 100 drones at the same time, manually? Impossible. This is a task we humans can't do, but they have developed a software for this. So they have in the AI, which you only tell, well, this is the premise, please, please protect it, or this is the premise, please surveillance, or this is a mesh network we want to establish, and this is the moving fleet out there. And all these drones, they have a very minor AI out there, and these minor AI, is controlled by the larger AI, and the AI behind it is a human who's giving the task. So they use AI and AIs to do and control the machines. All the company Microbsy Industries, based here in Berlin too, I mentioned this to show that we in Berlin have innovation talents, yeah, um, is teaching robots to learn. So they have a software, they have an AI which you integrate in a robot, and the robot is able to adapt to processes. Instead of programming your robot, the robot will learn from you. So, artificial intelligence is eating our human world. That's a fact. Why? Because we want this. We all, you invest all your time here to learn about this. Maybe you already have invested money and more time to build an AI or to buy an AI. We invest a lot of time into research to develop AIs. We invest as investors a, a company, um, in companies who build AIs. Billions of dollars go in this. We want this. We have done this for the last centuries. We use machines because we want to work less. We use machines to do the stuff which we don't like to do anymore. The same will be about AI. Just this time it's not about physical strengths, it's about your mental strengths. So how could artificial intelligence be 2015? Because we have enough um, speakers today who will tell you how amazing AI is today and how they solved it and so forth. So I will give you a little glimpse outside. Let's imagine you are hungry. Uh, if not, there's breakfast outside, and later we have very good food trucks there, so don't start to eat something now, but let's say you're hungry. If you're hungry today, you buy something to eat, you have to go to a restaurant, you, have to, you can't cook, you can't take out your Lieferheld app and order sushi or pizza. Imagine you are hungry, you think it, and half an hour later, food is ready. Imagine you think you're hungry and the food arrives at your doorstep. That's all you have to do. Do you think this is science fiction or magic? The thing is, it's already present. This is a very ugly helmet. This is a brain-computer interface. It is able to read the electrochemical signals in your mind. It's not in your mind. It's certainly it's in the outside. And today you already can control it. This technology is old. It's for the last 20 years around. You can use to control computers. You can play this game, say, go this and this direction. Um, people with AL ALS who are totally paralyzed, they can use it to type messages. So it's mostly used into, um, uh, into medical devices. But this works. It's just ugly. It is slow. It's not scalable. 
But it's a technology, so you can think and something acts on your computer. Well, then we have a guy called Elon Musk, and we all know Elon Musk is a little bit crazy, over-ambitious, visionary, and he's right at the end. So Elon Musk just started a company called Neuralink, and he wants to build exactly this kind of device. Neuralink is developing ultra-high bandwidth brain-machine interfaces to connect humans and computers. So they are doing this, so it's not science fiction anymore. And then if you have watched Facebook F8 developer conference a couple of weeks ago, we had this lady there, and she spoke about that by 2019, Facebook will bring out a device which will let you type words to a computer just by thinking. So in two years, maybe three years, because it always takes longer, um, or four years, you will have a device out there which let you read your thoughts and print them on the computer screen. By the way, this lady used to be the head of research at DARPA, so DARPA is financing everything this. DARPA is the American military agency. Why do they do it? Well, the government fear one thing the most, and that's their own citizens. So that's the way access into your brain. There will be solutions against this, but still, you have to be aware that this will happen. So the first thing which happened with this is you don't need this device anymore. You don't need these devices anymore. You don't need to type in because in the next five, let's say by 2025, you're sitting in front of a device and you think and you will see it. Imagine that every app you just think and the app opens. You say, oh, go down and something happens or even more sophisticated. Imagine you think something and you think so much and it's a feeling. Did you ever have this moment that you had an argument with your wife or your husband and you didn't understand them? Happens to me quite often. So I wish I would get the feeling what she has because words are so terrible in expressing what we really feel. So in future, you will be able to share feelings. It won't be that you force your feelings on it. You will have your own permission. You will accept what you have, like the same will like words. You only speak if you want to. And if you don't want to speak, nothing will happen. So the same will be with words, but you will be able to share it. I like public speaking. And I'm not perfect. I speak too fast. I like to walk around. I, sometimes I'm over the time. So I had to practice as a kid. I was, as a kid, always sitting first row. And when the teacher asked me, who wants to give a talk? I was like, I do it. Um, so I was the nerd, and uh, nerds rule the world, by the way, today. Yes, everyone knows who has an IT department or technical unit. And I, I practice a lot. I practice hours of it, but I'm far from perfect. So I'm pretty sure someone in this room is better than me. So just imagine you can share your skills with me. Everyone can share his skills with me. You will come to a point where you know something and you want to share it. You share not only your words or you give a workshop about this. You can share your experiences, your algorithm in your brain, plus your storage, your data set, and you can share it free one time. So then this is real, just without the ugly plug in your head. It will be just wireless. We will come, what I call, is the Internet of Agents. And this is coming back to AI. So how will you communicate with AI in seven years or eight years? Well, you will have them in your mind in a certain way, and you just communicate, say, oh, please order food there, or please uh, read the emails for me, or please make an appointment uh, for dinner with my wife tonight, or please send my mom mother some flowers. Today, use apps for this, or websites. Whatever what is a website or an app will be a bot, and everything which will be a bot will be an agent who's fulfilling your purposes, your needs. AI is serving to these needs you have, and you will have these orders, and today you type these orders, and at this time, you will think it. Well, AI will run our world by then. It's already running today. It will run our digital world, yes. We, you can't create virtual realities and all these worlds without the help of AI. And you can't create an augmented world which is coming out without the help of AI. It will help you to filter. And by the way, Facebook just published a new tool which is creating augmented pictures. So you're running around today like Snapchat filters, just more with everything else. In the future, you will see that when you use Facebook, all your environment will be labeled. You will see, you go out there, who liked what, through your lenses, because they have published this. So it will come too in the next couple of years. And AI will run our physical world. Just take this example. An AI is sitting in a satellite. The satellite is screening the field. It's deciding when the machine is supposed to go out, and the machines uh, are doing the job. Today, already less than 2% are uh, working for uh, agriculture. It used to be 98%. Why? Because we use machines. These machines just will be smarter. So do we want this? I see skeptical faces. I know this. 
And I don't speak about something which will happen. I don't speak about something which I want. I just say this is what I see which will come. So whatever things happen, there will be challenges. There will be obstacles. There will be setbacks. There will be things we don't like. But we can't change it. That's why we're here to learn about this. We need to adapt. We need to change as a society, as governments, as corporations, as individuals. With every technology, environment will be different and we have to adapt to this. So normally I, uh, people ask me, well, AI is eating the jobs. And you saw this in the video. And it's true. I don't say this won't happen. But the thing is, AI will not replace you right away. Everything you do today, it's safe. It's more that you will use AI yourself to be more productive in your job, which means on the midterm, your company just needs to hire less people to get the same output. Hopefully, the time you're saving, you can spend with your family and not working even more. So today I just brought you as a, a glimpse some jobs which will be used for AI in the future. One thing is AI trainer. Today it's a little, very technical job, but it will be less and less technical. We need people out there who are teaching AIs how the world looks. You're teaching your kids something, we send them to school, you have a training on the job, you go to university, whenever you learn something, AI can learn it too. So we need people out there who are training AI how their job is supposed to be done, how they can help them, how to see this. We have to teach them the frameworks, the rules, the motivation, the ethical values. All this needs to be trained. You don't program AI anymore, you teach AI, you train AI. Well, then we need AI controllers, and this will be a fun job. If you have ever played Farmball or Starcraft or something like this, it will be similar. So why should you go out on the field and drive the machine? Why don't you have a dashboard where you can see all the machines there and you optimize there? Why? Because we are the intelligence behind it. We use AIs to do stuff which you can't do at this moment. Well, we will have world creators. Especially with the augmented reality and the virtual reality, we need a lot of people who can fulfill their dreams, who, who want to be God and create new worlds for others to fulfill their fantasies, whatever they want to do. We need this. And this will be a very cool job, by the way. Everyone will be able to create a matrix for their own. Everyone will create matrix for others. There won't be one matrix we all enter. It's more that everyone can opt in as he wants to because we create these worlds with the help of AI. Community managers, the more we use technology, the more people are important. That's why you're here physical. That's why you don't have a streaming pass. That's why you don't wait for the YouTube video. You're here because you want to meet people. You want to connect. You want to get this energy. That's why people are important. But people will be important in the virtual and in the offline world too. And yes, consultancy, we need them too. They, we won't get rid of them. Sorry for those. Yes, but I did it too before. Um, they will be there because with every change, you need people explaining change to those who do not understand it. So lawyers, consultancy, everything which is a people business, the people power, this will stay. This is the emotional part. This which, which we can't solve because we don't have understand it ourselves yet. So everything which is based on people, this will stay. Everything which is based on a computer, you're sitting in front of a computer and putting data in and getting data out, you don't want to do this. I don't like sitting in front of the computer. I like speaking with you people. So. Next question, what values should your AI have? Because if we go like we go today, it either will think Chinese or will think American. We don't have a strong European ecosystem for artificial intelligence. That is why we host this conference, because we want to show that we have talent. See, we want to bring everything together. But currently, your AI will probably think American or Chinese. It won't share European values. And you can think about the consequences about this and how we want to change this. And if you want that your AI, your self-driving car, is having values from a culture which you have never lived in, you don't speak and you don't know, but it will act like this. Why? Because we train AI. So the AI is the replication of the people who trained it, and it will be trained in the country where it's programmed most often. So this is a rise of AI. It's a day to inspire you. It's a day to teach you. It's a day where you ha hopefully get enough brain food to discuss, to take home. I hope that you all have system overload at the end. Yes, I want to give you so much information today with all these speakers um, that you have enough to think for a couple of days. But Rise of AI is also a place to meet people, to look for investors who want to finance your startup, to look for startups you maybe want to finance, for your potential clients, someone to hire, someone who did research you want to support, you want to work. You're all here to mingle, to network, because you're all interested in this topic. You all have a connection to this. And this is mo the most important about this. So, be my last words. Artificial intelligence is just a tool for us to be more human. We humans will stay for a while the super intelligence. We're still the ones who do all the brain work and we just use 
AI as a tool to extend our world. So there is no fear of super AI yet. I don't know what will be in 10 to 20 years, but for the next 10 years, I'm pretty sure we will stay the super intelligence in the room. Thank you.